Welcome to Ranger Rob Has Your Back, a show that features your business, your services, your products. On Ranger Rob Has Your Back, you are the star. Let Ranger Rob be your advocate. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. This is Ranger Rob, and welcome to uh, Ranger Rob Has Your Back. This is the last of uh, part three of uh, being a visionary. And uh, it's kind of a humorous subject. And, and, you know, everybody has different personalities. Some people are drivers. Other people are more analytical, detail-oriented. But um, <laughs> I was being focused on being a visionary. And uh, right off the bat, and I've said it in the other videos too, that visionaries are in, uh, in insane. They constantly think ahead. They can play a scenario in their head over and over and over. So you'll probably find a lot of visionaries don't sleep that well because their imagination, their uh, planning, their um, things are just constantly rolling in their heads uh, when they have an idea or a plan. And so uh, I was uh, kind of going through, you know, at, at my age, a couple of uh, decades worth of things. And the last thing I was telling you folks about was, um, is I created a chain of kite stores. Well, uh, um, beyond that, uh, we actually, uh, <laughs> already talked about that part, um, created a, uh, internet web design company that did very good and was very successful. And we sold it in 2003. And after that, uh, cause of non-compete, I had to go into web marketing, which, uh, actually was kind of an important thing back in the day. Um, a lot of people had websites, but then the problem is, is the world was getting saturated with them and they wanted to find a way to stand out. Well, so we did a lot of that for a lot of uh, uh, different websites and stuff. Uh, actually, it was really good income. And we also got into affiliate marketing, which was through Google and all that stuff. And back in the day, Google and AdSense was a little different than it is today. And so we uh, there was ways to make incredible monies. Um, doing that. And we're talking incredible monies. Um, probably the most income I ever made uh, so much uh, in such a short time. And uh, But, you know, uh, th this is where you want to learn not to put all your eggs in one basket because we were having a lot of money rolling in. And uh, unfortunately, that was coming from one source. Well, of course, you know how Google and YouTube and all those guys are. Uh, back in the day, they decided to change pretty much everything they were doing and uh, folks like us who were doing affiliate marketing uh, got devastated. And uh, what just happened to be around the same time that the uh, uh, recession hit. And so not good timing. So 2003 was uh, um, devastating. I even know uh, uh, internet marketing was great and we had great ideas and, and uh, uh, everything, but you know, when the world changes, the world changes, and so we definitely got our uh, selves beat up and took some heavy losses. And um, a lot of things that happened to people in the recession happened to us too. So, uh, scrambling around, visionaries can get a little bummed out a little bit, and uh, sometimes you have the tendency of uh, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? But we tend to pick ourselves up again and start going forward as soon as we find that next thing to latch on to. So uh, with uh, a little bit of innovation and, and, and there's so many things in between, but kind of the, um, decided to go back into the corporate world, the same uh, aerospace company I worked for before. Because, I, you know, I had quite a few years in that. And uh, going back, I was actually able to regain the years that I put into them to uh, if I went five more years, I could actually retire from them. So that's exactly what I did, kind of worked my way back into that aerospace company through different means. And uh, so uh, my new vision was get five years over with and get a pension um, at least. And yes, I'm going to be visited by my little uh, German shepherd back here. <laughs> She's a youngin. Anyway, so uh, uh, at age 55, uh, it drove me crazy. Vi visionaries in a big corporate scene. Uh, especially after they've been in business for themselves and stuff, uh, definitely made sense to get the heck out of there. So at 55, voila. Well, of course, in between all that, I got interested, and there was other times we did it too. We got interested in uh, RV travel. 
So uh, we took time off and actually uh, did full-time RVing in a fifth wheel um, and created uh, you know this YouTube channel. And you'll see in this YouTube channel, uh, if you go back in, there's over 850 videos, I believe. And you'll see that the first one-third of them is RV Travel Buddy, which was another vision. And uh, that was fun and stuff like that. The only problem with that is when, when you decide you're not going to travel anymore, <laughs> it's kind of hard to make videos about it. So uh, uh, so now we're getting kind of closer to the current time. And uh, uh, one of the things that, you know, uh, after taking such a hit in 2008 with the recession and stuff, we did have a big dream. It was like, we'd like to get back into a house and, and, and things like that. <clears throat> um, and after traveling after a while, you get kind of tired of living in a small space. But the the opportunity and uh, to uh, do such a thing was insanely uh, fun, just plain old fun. And uh, so I'm, I'll never regret any of that. So, but uh, with Sherry uh, doing some career stuff and me doing some career stuff, um, we uh, were able to actually purchase a house in, in um, uh, Phoenix. And uh, in Phoenix, things were uh, really cool, just going great. Uh, however, uh, you know, we uh, also were uh, the responsible siblings for her mom and dad, which were getting up in age. And a year ago, um, her father passed away. And we always, you know, what, one of the things we were also kind of getting into is uh, prepping and getting kind of more prepared uh, because the um, the world and the economy and and the things are just getting a little scary. And so uh, we're really getting in that, but that was, and learning how to grow things, uh, gardening, the whole works. So our latest vision has been kind of like living in the outdoors and, and I'll kind of, it's like how we ended up on five acre place and uh, growing our own food and learning how to preserve food. And, and at the same time, when you do all this, you also have to have uh, you know, other income. So my wife works and that's where we get our insurance and extra income. And I own a radio station now. <clears throat> and I've had that for about three years. And we just launched um, Cutting Edge TV, which is a Roku channel and uh, still kind of learning all the ropes on that, but it's going very well and very successful. Um, whole new endeavor. It's, it's who say, you know, who says oh, <laughs> you can't take, teach an old dog new tricks. So a lot of our radio station folks uh, are, you know, taking their shows to the next level uh, and being able to be on television and things like that. And of course, we've got to learn how to how to get those shows uh, scheduled and running and and uh, marketed and all that kind of stuff too. So our latest vision, which is uh, oh, and one of the um, is is getting the multimedia working really well. Um, one of the things you'll learn over age, though is you're not as out of control as a visionary as you were when you're younger. And you do tend to take uh, experiences and apply that. So it does modify the fact that you're always going to be a visionary. But as you get older, you tend to uh, uh, weigh things out, play things in your head a lot. But um, it kind of reduces a little bit to the point of, you know where the barriers and limitations are. And as you get older, that's probably the biggest thing to learn as a visionary is you're, you're going to be more limited to the, you know, I, I obviously can't be a lumberjack anymore or <laughs> some of the things I did in the past because a little older now and not as uh, strong as I used to be. And so uh, as a visionary, uh, when you get older, you tend to still be a visionary, but you uh, you tend to play back in your head those things, um, um, knowing what your limitations are, and you tend to make a little bit better decisions. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that kind of, uh, this little series about being a visionary, what it's like. Uh, uh, it's it's fun, it's exciting, it's out of control. Um, and I think the whole biggest thing you might have gotten out of this whole thing is surround yourself with people opposite of you. Do not hang out with other visionaries or you'll be in trouble. Um, a visionary needs support, uh, needs people that are grounded, need detailed people to um, uh, take your vision and take your ideas and make them real. 
And that's what my wife has been for me. <laughs> and that's why we've been married 40 years and she's put up with that. But at the end of the day, when uh, I croak, I want her to be able to sit on the podium and go, wow, that was a fun ride. <laughs> <laughs> was it perfect? No. Was it interesting? Yeah. Was it exuberating at sometimes? Oh, for sure. But uh, in the long run, you can say you lived a full life. So that's all I got for you on this one. Uh, thank you very much for uh, watching our uh, series. Uh, please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. And uh, be safe, everyone. And if you have any stories about being a visionary, uh, please leave it below. So take care, guys. Bye now. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.